After the initial eruption, a lot of people were wondering, when is Mount St. Helens going to erupt again? After all, volcanoes are in a constant process of rebuilding themselves, and Mount St. Helens didn't disappoint. March of 1982, there was an explosion from the dome, and it uh, melted a bunch of snow and ice in the back wall of the crater, which broke out and created a flood uh, down the North Fork Toodle River, a small mud flow that went essentially almost down to where Elk Rock is. We're looking at these loose, fragmented volcanic materials that are sort of draped on the landscape, just kind of piled up there. And where water runs down through it, like those, the canyons in front of the crater, it carves these tremendous notches in this loose material. One of the big surprises following the eruption was not just the formation of the lava dome, but quite its opposite, a glacier right next to it. After 1986, the mountain kind of went quiet, and went quiet for about 18 years. A glacier formed in the crater. From the snowfall onto the rim and into the crater, that area around the back of the crater, behind, shaded from the south by the crater walls, and shaded by the lava dome, to the north was a perfect spot. So America's youngest glacier formed. The mountain came back to life in 2004 to begin another major dome building phase. The first sign we had of it were swarms of earthquakes. Of course, again, earthquakes being an important indicator of, of rock fracturing and, and magma movement beneath the surface. So many of us expected this uh, seismic swarm to kind of build and then die off. And each subsequent phone call that I'd get from the geologist is, Peter, it's, it's continuing to increase. And so it became clear within the matter of days to a week that Mount St. Helens was getting ready to do something. Of course, the world's attention was focused on Mount St. Helens and over the course of about two to three weeks, we went from a quiet volcano to one that was uh, back into an eruption. We were getting a very large dump truck load of lava being erupted continuously into the crater every second. So at that rate, geologists calculated that it would be probably 100 years or less for that missing part of Mount St. Helens to be rebuilt. Mount St. Helens is not done, and we certainly need to watch it. To some scientists, the quick regeneration of the area is not a big surprise. Eruptions and recovery are just a part of living in the Ring of Fire. When Mount St. Helens gets busy, it can get very busy, and it can do impressive things. And that obviously builds a mountain that we know and love, but it also has some potential consequences in terms of the hazards associated with that volcanic activity. Coldwater Lake didn't exist prior to the mountain's eruption, and now it's a symbol of the renewal of this area, because not only is it a great place to come and sit and spend an afternoon, it's also possible to catch fish in here. Our planet has an incredible ability to regenerate and to see new growth. As much as the eruption caused a change, so much is still the same. It may never be quite the same, but in a lot of ways it will always be the same too. There's no way stopping nature. It's gonna do what it's gonna do, and if it's, if it's erupted and come back three or four times, it's gonna to continue to do that. We can't screw it up enough that she can't fix it. <laughs> you see elk, deer, coyotes, uh, cougar, mountain goats in the high country. Many of the same species uh, that were there before the eruption are coming back. The area is uh, alive with wildflowers in the summertime. You'll often hear ecologists say, we expected this, it looked like a moonscape, it would take forever. Either I was too ignorant to have those expectations or I just didn't feel like I had to pin anything on those expectations. I am often awestruck out there. I was when I first arrived, and I continue to be more awestruck than ever 20 years after working there. 
Many lupins can extract phosphorus from rocks that other plants can't access. Uh, it can avoid drought. Uh, these soils were very drought tolerant. It can pollinate itself so it doesn't have to rely on a pollinator finding an isolated plant in that remote landscape. Even an area like Spirit Lake, which saw total destruction both above and below the waterline, has come back to life. Right now there are aquatic plants on the shore of Spirit Lake at the edge of the pumice plain, that is the side closest to the crater. So that certainly brings up the question of why is that happening? And the reason we think that's happening is because nutrients must be coming into the lake from the pumice plain. We think that that probably reveals that there's a striking link between the development of a new terrestrial plant community and what goes on in the lake at the edge of that community. You just never dream that there'd ever be anything alive in that lake ever again. And geez, they're recording four and five pound rainbows in there now. So everything comes back. <laughs>